Hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, welcome to our Ask the Team session. It's Logic Apps, not Logic Applications. A um, few things. We're having a small amount of technical gremlins this morning, so um, please bear with us. My colleagues should be with me. They're just working with support to, to get online, but I'm going to get kicked off as we've hit the time. Um, so uh, I'll I'll get our session started and hopefully they'll be popping up to help me answer questions or, or you'll have to just deal with me. But um, let's see how we get on. So uh, I hope you're all enjoying build. Uh, I certainly am. Um, I'm not enjoying that it's at currently five o'clock uh, or nearly six o'clock in the morning here in Seattle. But uh, but hey, we've got a lot of stuff to pack into the 48 hour period of time. So as I said, this is the uh, Ask the Team session um, uh, for Azure Logic Apps. So what to expect in the session? Um, I'm just going to do a quick bunch of intros, which of course is to just me and hopefully my colleagues, which will be joining us soon. And uh, then we'll just jump over to the question and answer. Um, I don't know if you've been in a session like this so far at Build. What generally happens is we uh, you post questions in the in the uh, channel. Uh, we filter them, uh, work out which ones uh, we're going to answer and how, and we we publish them and then give you an answer. And hopefully that works. Um, feel free to kind of do a bit of back and forth in the channel as well. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll uh, we'll help you out and get through and uh, provide some good answers. Um, how to engage if you've not been in one of these sessions before? Uh, use the chat box, post anonymously or your name if you can, um, and then what questions will appear. I'll vote the ones you really like, so you know which ones are important to you. Hopefully, um, before we've answered them. And then we'll make a little note of the ones we answer in the chat as opposed to ones we we uh, type. Um, I say most of the answers will be verbal, but we might type some if uh, if and when my colleagues join. And then we'll answer the most popular ones first. Um, I think the session is recorded. I have no uh, way to confirm that right about now. But uh, just be just be aware of reading a big stream of stuff at, at once. So uh, lots of spam all at once uh, makes makes my life harder. And then uh, adhere to the code of conduct, which is here. I'm not going to read it. I say I do have my coffee here to, to kind of uh, wake me up this morning. Uh, meet the team. I am uh, the one in the middle left. So uh, I'm Matt Farmer. I'm a uh, program manager in the uh, in the uh, Azure Logic Apps team. Sorry, my team are all pinging me to sell me things. And uh, joining me very soon will be John Fancy and Derek Lee and possibly Divya Swanka uh, from our team as well. So things you can ask us about this morning uh, before I swip, uh, switch over to the question and answer stuff. Um, obviously, logic apps. Uh, feel free to ask us lots of questions about that. Uh, integration service environment, which is our dedicated tier for logic apps. Um, you can ask us about kind of low, no code pattern for developers. Lo we love the kind of high level uh, future direction architecture questions. More than happy to answer some of those and how, you know, you as a developer, you as an architect, can use those tools to be more effective. Um, we can, you can also ask us about integration platform as a service, which is, service, which is kind of uh, the industry term for uh, integration software um, as is today. Um, or the, you know, when we talk about iPads, we talk about Azure integration services across uh, the service bus API management in addition to Logic Apps. Happy to talk about that as well. OK, let's jump to the uh, question and answer. I will do this and we'll see what's come in. So hopefully you can hear me because I have no way to confirm it. But let's have a look.
So it looks like from some of the questions I can see we'll do that. So first question we've got is from Tim. Hi, Tim. Uh, big fan of Logic Apps. Power Automate seems to get most of the love and headlines. Um, so let's 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 address that and how they relate to each other, I suppose. Um, you know, Power Automate and Logic Apps are, um, as you can probably tell, based on the same core platform. Um, uh, so yes, a lot of the things in the visual designer that you see are shared across Power Automate and Logic Apps. Um, uh, so are we going to change some of the things such as slug, sluggish response with longer, more complicated flows, difficulty entering, editing, editing expressions, some quirks? Um, so uh, just to finish what I was saying about the difference between Power Automate and, and Logic Apps, obviously Power Automate, ho hopefully it's clear in the way in which we talk about this, that Power Automate is the citizen developer offering. It's meant for um, power users, whereas Logic Apps is the developer offering, the um, IT Pro offering, um, and that's generally how they're separated. But yes, they do share a common underpinning. Stan, issues with sluggish visual designer. Um, I think y yes, obviously. So we have uh, um, we are working on an update to the designer. Uh, that is something we are planning for later on this year. The but the sluggish response time with complicated flows. I think I suspect that's uh, as, you know when when you do get a very wide um, tree, then that can become a, a little bit painful. Totally understand the issue. The changes we're putting in the designer, for example, having a fixed panel that allows you to do editing within an action, so it doesn't pop around all over the screen. Uh, hence the difficulty entering, entering expressions is something that we're working on right now. It isn't quite ready to go, but um, it will be something we're able to share over the summer. So uh, yes, we are aware of those issues and definitely working on them. Hope that answers your question. Let's go and find another one. Uh, John Medina, hello from Colombia. Uh, listen, uh, where would I use Logic Apps over Power Automate? Let's just um, answer that one from Derek. Um, where would I use Logic Apps over Power Automate, uh, given I can't include Logic Apps in the solution for deployment? Interesting. OK, so let's let's answer. Um, can't include logic apps in a solution for deployment. So let's answer this. The two parts of this question. So yes, absolutely. You can include logic apps in a solution deployment. I would love a follow up in the chat if you can about uh, where where you're seeing the inability to add it in into a solution deployment. You should be able to add logic apps into an arm template that allows you to then uh, publish it to different subscriptions, um, check it into source control, um, your CRCD platform. The, the where would, so yes, you should absolutely be able to do that. Um, if you're finding problems with that, I'd love to hear more. The, where should I use Logic Apps over Power Automate? Um, you should be, so Power, Power Automate, as, as I said, is, is a, um, Power Automate is a uh, solution for citizen developers, for users who are, um, all of us can be citizen developers. I suppose the question is, is, th is the context of what you're building something that a citizen developer would build or a um, software engineer? Uh, are you checking into source control, things like that? If that's the case, then it would definitely suggest um, using logic apps power automate is there for automating the stuff you do whereas whereas logic apps is good for automating uh parts of an application is perhaps where i would see the difference uh, as i said you should be able to do the automation uh and in, in, with arm templates and, and checking into your source control solution hmm. looks like uh i might be the uh, only one joining us for this session so apologies if the cadence of getting through questions is a little slower so uh, let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, 
Uh, question here about Logic Apps connectors exceeded the limits issue. So I'm assuming this is because you're uh, hitting throttles. So I've created a secondary connector to manage this with run after. Is there a smarter way to handle this? Um, currently, no, um, but we're very much aware of this issue. Um, I think, Andrew, uh, the, the things I would love to know is what connectors it is that you're hitting this limit on. So we actually have a piece of work going on right now to examine examine where throttling limits are, are hitting some users. So we we have data about where people are, are hitting throttles. Obviously, we put them in to make sure we protect all users of Logic Apps, uh, calling backend services and those backend services. But I think what we're we're looking at right now is where that actually causes big problems and uh, causes you to not be able to build the application you want to build. So um, if that is something that is a problem, uh, we're looking at where we can up those limits right now. So uh, I'd love you to reply with what sort of connectors that was because that's uh, very timely to a piece of work we're doing right now. So I think uh, you will see it improve over time. But yes, the the workaround at this point is to just uh, have a, a, an additional connection that you use um, if, if you're getting throttled. Oh, we've got 50 questions. Well, thank you very much for your questions. I won't apologize for how quickly I can get through them. A uh, question here on can you govern uh, can you govern connectors using Azure policy? Yes, you can. Uh, my colleague Derek, who I believe is on the chat here, but unable to join the um, uh, moderators at this point, unfortunately, has, um, I believe he's written a blog post to do that. So I'm hoping Derek can reply in this uh, chat and then tell us what the link is if he's still on. Um, but if not, if you search for Derek Lee Azure policy logic apps, you should be able to find the article is written about how to do that. So yeah, you, you can. Uh, Ravi's asked a question, what scenarios can we use? Um, Ravi, uh, what, what scenarios can we use Logic Apps and Azure Functions? So um, this is absolutely a core scenario that we see. And uh, again, feel free to reply in the uh, chat if this is something that you're passionate about. But we definitely see customers using those two things together. Um, now, one thing I should point you to right now is there is uh, an on-demand session that I've done uh, this week that is shared with API management, but there's a demo in there that shows something new that we're working on and will be released later on, later this year, I'm hoping, the, that is showing a much closer relationship between logic apps and functions in the way in which you can develop applications. So the... Um, the, the scenarios we see are very much using logic apps to scaffold the, the core components of the flow within your application and using functions to call out and do those unique programming tasks that make up, uh, that really make that unique. So by using the two together, you can do, you can, you can build quite a, a wide range of application pieces very, very quickly. Uh, for example, you can use logic apps and connectors to go and connect to SaaS and for, to, um, you know, uh, open API based services. But then you also want to do some uh, particular processing, some kind of transformation with functions. So combining those two things together is a pretty strong um, pattern and we definitely recommend it. But the, the changes you'll see in that video, I think the uh, session code is BOD127. Um, if you want to go and have a look at it on the Channel 9 site. 
um, or it's linked into my a live session as well um, that will give you uh, kind of a sneak peek of where we're thinking that goes. Um, and very much the, the scenario is that the work on that will be in an IDE, uh, very much like you know production scenarios for functions. We also see people doing that with logic apps as well. Uh, Rick has asked about the plans for, and what I just talked about there is logic apps on the functions runtime. So that's what uh, that demo shows. So the 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 new um, hi Rick, the the new uh, thing we showed it was it's in not quite in the early preview yet. So we're still a little bit away, but what that allows you to do is compile those logic apps on the functions runtime locally on your developer machine. So um, as a developer, you get the experience of doing that wherever you need to on your dev box. That's strong feedback we've had. And then you're able to use the same constructs within the functions runtime to deploy those logic apps wherever you would want, wherever you're deploying functions. But the, I, the what we suspect will happen and what we believe people want to do is deploy uh, logic apps workflows and also call functions and then have those as a, a, a pairing that they, they can then deploy wherever they wish. In addition to things like API management as an API endpoints, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I strongly suggest you go and check out that uh, demo. Um, in terms of plans, I don't think we're able, I'm not going to show anything, share anything too specific uh, right now in this session, but we're, we're looking at previewing it, I think later in the year is what we said. Um, so sorry, Rick, I can't be too specific <laughs> right now, but uh, go and check out my session, uh, see what you think, give us your feedback. There's also a sign up form there for private preview if you wish. Um, places are limited, but uh, everybody's open to sign up. Uh, Andrew G. Is there going to be a means to edit the design inside Visual Studio Code? And just just tacky onto what I've just said, the first thing that I demo in that session is the designer in VS Code. So uh, yes, yes, there absolutely is. And I think we increasingly see that as one of the primary places people are going to be building logic apps moving forward. So yeah, give that a go. Um, uh, that's absolutely the case. Um, oh, I clicked on the wrong button, but I'll answer it right now. So there was a question there from, um, oh, it's anonymous. When do you use logic apps versus when do you use functions? So I'll answer that one quickly because it kind of fits into that piece. Obviously, um, the changes that I talked about there, that becomes less and less of an issue. But when to use logic apps versus when to use functions? Um, Logic Apps will give you, Logic Apps as it is today, will give you uh, a whole bunch of uh, tools that allow you to uh, stitch those applications together very quickly. Um, things like connectors, things like patterns, like for each and things like that don't require you to write code. I think it's up to you and it's, uh, as we're developers, many of us are developers on this uh, this event, you know, uh, you. You want to write the code that you want to write. You know, I was, I um, have been a developer, um, and uh, it's not always necessary to write every piece of code. Logic Apps is a really great tool to help you um, put together the stuff that you don't want to write. So by joining these two things together, you can go and use functions to write the code that you really want to write that really adds value, and use Logic Apps to do some of the code that you know nobody likes writing unit tests for API calls, right? So allowing Logic Apps to do some of that in a repeatable control way, plus writing the code where you want to write the code in functions. Again, that's that's the um, use case very much that we see a lot of customers asking for. So I don't think there's a when um, and uh, you know an explicit you must use this as opposed to you must use that. Again, the changes that we're bringing mean that's even less of a consideration. Today, I think some of the things you have to be a little bit careful of with, with both services is certainly 
things like um, request response scenarios. If you're looking for super low latency, Logic Apps Today isn't the place uh, to do that right now. What we're doing is adding some changes uh, that will make that far more uh, viable. Uh, functions is probably a better use case for that, but even functions, depending on the tier you're using, may have some issues in there. So there is a lot to consider, but I think what we're working on is making it less difficult for you to have to think about those things when you're designing a solution. Uh, question here about will there be will there be a dedicated ice version of the Oracle connector? Um, that's a good question. The current connector, as you point out, right, uh, works on the public logic apps through the on-premise data gateway. We are making some changes to the Oracle connector. Um, I think I can't confirm whether that's going into the ice. Um, I don't believe it is for, for dedicated. However, um, kind of slightly longer term, we are looking at a more unified pattern that we would have so that you could work with both kinds of uh, tier of logic apps. So uh, ice is the dedicated tier. So uh, in the short term, no, we are working on some updates on the Oracle connector across the summer. But in the longer term, and I'm thinking kind of nine months to a year out, I think we will have a solution for you there. Uh, Lisa, you've asked a question. I'm new to Logic Apps and will need to migrate several complicated BizTalk maps over to Logic Apps. Is there any advice you can impart how best to go about migrating these? Yes, um, the thing I would suggest you do is download the Logic Apps Enterprise Integration Pack for Visual Studio. So there is a, a, a small problem with that at the moment in that we haven't actually upgraded that to Visual Studio 2019. We are working on that. Um, but if you're happy to run that in an older version of Visual Studio, what you can do is import those BizTalk maps into the Enterprise Integration pa uh, Pack, and you can use that to generate assets that will run uh, BizTalk pieces within Logic Apps in what's called an integration account. So you should be able to run those maps in the integration account in Logic Apps. So that would be the first thing I suggest for you. Um, uh, again, depending on exactly how big and complicated those BizTalk maps are, uh, there may be some restrictions that we have. Um, you know, there, there, there are limits, but um, I would try that first and then see how, uh, see whether that uh, solves your problem um, and then go from there. Thanks. Okay. Um, Uh, Rick's asked this and I've had a, a bunch of other questions, so I suspect some of you have joined slightly late about um, Power Automate versus Logic App. It was the first question I answered, so I'll answer it again. Apologies for those who are already on the call. Um, where to fit one and the other? So Power Automate is definitely something that should be applied to scenarios where it's running in the user's context, where it is um, uh, simplifying, automating something the user will do. Logic Apps is uh, for when you are building an application is generally the difference I, I would apply. Um, if you if you require checking checking into source control, if it's part of an app, if, uh, Logic Apps is the tool to do that. That's the developer tool. Power Automate is really about automating what that what a user is doing. Now you can use these two things together. So for example, your Logic App could be published as a, a, as an API that is then called from Power Automate 
um, to automate a task that the user wants to do. So they could, they do work absolutely together, but they're very much, dis um, if you look at the way in which they are, their feature set, their pricing, they're designed about fitting into those two separate buckets about being uh, a developer tool versus uh, an automation tool for users. So it really depends on what user you're targeting and what your wider use case is, but that's, that's the way I would pitch it. And again, they are not something that cannot be used together something we see more and more is customers asking to be able to use those two things together or specifying things like an RFI where they say, um, I want to be able to use uh, a low code uh, tooling within application development, but I also want to provide that tooling for my wider business as part of the same project. Uh, and that's where those things absolutely work together. And there's another question uh, there. Can Power Automate migrate to Logic Apps? So yes, you can take a Power Automate uh, flow and uh, turn it into a Logic App. There's actually a, a function in the uh, menu within Power Automate to do that. There are a few features that won't migrate, but 90% uh, of them should. Uh, Anti has asked, uh, Logic Apps on Functions runtime in Docker, full parity with the cloud version. Um, that is the intention, but we're too early for me to give you a definitive answer on that. Um, but yes, uh, that that is, I've, I'm trying to rack my brains and say it's fairly early in the morning. Whether there's any scenarios there that wouldn't work, um, I don't think I'm early enough to be able to give you an answer there, but the, our aim is to be able to do that. So. Um, Watch this space, but yes, that's the intention. Uh, Michael or Mitchell. Um, any plans to introduce mechanisms like breakpoint to debug a live run? Yes, absolutely there is. So. Uh, again, we haven't got that feature built right now um, and would love your feedback more detail on what you'd like to see. But again, uh, pointing to that demo that I'm do that I uh, do in the on demand session that um, what we show you there is very much a developer viewpoint. It's like looking into an it is looking into an IDE as a developer running logic apps and the sorts of things you would expect as a developer include being able to uh, set a breakpoint, swap out variables, um, and you know, continue run and things like that. So absolutely, that's some a feature we want to bring uh, as well to that, and that's something we've had a lot of feedback on. I would love to know if there are extra features or extra pieces around that story you're expecting to see, um, because that will be something we add uh, in the future. Uh, a quick question here is the SAP Connector for uh, uh, Integration Service Environment GA. Can't find docs on how to add it to the ICE environment. It does require the SAP NCO bits, as you say. Um, I'm just trying to rack my brains on whether it's GA. If it's not, it's very, very close. Um, so I will have to double check. I think that was going out around now. Um, we were just missing uh missing some something in the de uh, deployment pipeline um uh, ping me offline if you have a, a particular use case and this is a blocker for you but um if it's not now it will be in in uh the next few weeks at the most Sorry, just looking. Through questions, uh, John Medina. 
Uh, is it possible to replace BizTalk integrations with Logic Apps integrations at all? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, BizTalk is still available. Um, the, the wider team that I'm a part of looks after BizTalk and Logic Apps, but uh, the 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 feedback is gem generally that um, we are there to support you with BizTalk, but where you should be looking is to Logic Apps and to Azure. Um, I think what we see is that Logic Apps takes a lot of the heavy lifting for those um, those integrations, uh, but there are other pieces that perhaps are needed to replace uh, BizTalk in a modern way. So things like API management, like Service Bus. Um, but yes, you should be able to re replace those. Obviously, there are some specific use cases where um, where you may find challenges, but that is where I would suggest you look to if you want to, to replace those and swap those out. And as I mentioned earlier, what you can do is use the inter enterprise integration pack to take a lot of the schemas and maps and things like that, that you've created in BizTalk and migrate them into our integration account for using Logic Apps. Uh, Roman, uh, how can JavaScript blocks be of code be added on the free plan? So you can use. Um, so I think this is the inline code feature that we have, which is, is still in preview at the moment, but um, you can add JavaScript into the flow of the logic app for, for execution. In the background, that's actually using a, a, an Azure function. Um, you can use the basic plan of integration account to do that. Um, but the plan is to remove the dependency on that. I just can't give you an exact date on that right now. So um, look at the basic plan for now and uh, move to, move to uh, it should, that requirement should go away when we when we go to, to GA that feature. Got lots of questions now, so forgive me for scrolling through them. Uh, Rick so asked a good question about uh, version control CICD come up a lot with logic apps, uh, including the chat in your early session. Are you able to share anything about how developer experience will be improved? So yes, and again, <laughs> apologies pointing to my demo from uh, as a way to illustrate that, but uh, that's been a lot of my answers so far this week. The um, so a few things as part of uh, the, the new changes we're bringing in. Well, first one will be the concept of a local project. So developing locally on your own machine will allow you to, you know, you don't have to deploy to Azure, but you can also package together the changes you're making into one project. Um, so you can, you know, build five logic apps or whatever you need to to actually achieve what you're trying to build. You can then take this local project in the same way you can do with functions today, and you can deploy that local project as a package to your source control. So um, rather than dealing with each logic app on a separate ARM template, you can deploy uh, kind of an application's worth of them all at once and manage them together. The other thing that comes with it is uh, a better level of control over connections. So the connections you're creating, um, some of the some of the connections uh, will still be cloud based ones. Um, and will be managed similar to how you manage them today, but many of them will be ones where you can have the connection set up within a config file and package that config file up with the local project that you have. That's still evolving, but the idea is to make uh, it so that the primary place you're doing logic app development is within the IDE. Um, you know, we had a lot of feedback that from developers saying that, you know, I, I don't want to go to the portal. Um, I, I expect to do everything in the IDE on my desktop, and that's absolutely what we want to enable. And then when you're ready to go, you publish that up to your source control, uh, you know, kick off your continuous integration, uh, and then move on to the next piece of work in your IDE. That's that's where we plan to go. Um, uh, it's going to take a little time to get all the changes we want in there, but you should see um, uh, over the summer some of the, the changes we're bringing. And then, and then we further move into things like uh, breakpoints and things like that, as others have brought up earlier. Uh, 
apologies i'm not getting through the questions quite as quick as people would like um please bear with us i'll try to get through as many as i can Kevin, you've asked what is the best practice for uh, to test logic app flows, ensuring paths are executed and asserted. I think that this goes back to the previous answer I was just talking about where we want to make that developer experience better and things like being able to do that, that testing is absolutely something we want to do. There's a few things we're working on right now, but there's one thing you can do today if that not everybody's aware of. Um, we, there's a static outputs feature within Logic Apps, so you can uh, manually control the uh, output of a particular action. So if you did want to be able to assert paths, you can configure uh, Logic Apps with particular static outputs to then manipulate the flow where you want it to go. So that's the first one and that's available now. But the the other parts would be uh, we're looking at whether there's a way we can give you a unit testing framework so that you can um, you know unit test against the logic app like you would a code piece. So it's not ready right now, but that's something we're working on so that then it gives you much more fine game control on being able to set up and test what you've created. Uh, John, for the new Logic Apps Designer in Visual Studio Code, will that apply for the current Logic Apps as well? If not, are you working on such? Uh, sorry, not John, Johan. It's early in the morning. Um, will that apply for current Logic Apps as well? If not, are you working on such? Um, so the new design, uh, that is a very good question and we haven't completely locked on that. The new, um, there's two parts to it. So there is a refreshed UI for the designer. That is something that is kind of a separate piece of work. Uh, I don't see any reason why the refresh designer wouldn't apply across the board. The, um, the uh, editor within VS Code is with the new version of the runtime. Um, we haven't decided whether we're going to port that back yet, but I wouldn't want to make any promises. So what we will be doing is coming up with a full story about how it applies to anything you've created today as well. So bear with us on that while we get ready to tell that story, and then we'll be able to tell you what you can and can't do with, with the new stuff. At the moment, we're kind of showing you the new stuff, but we haven't completely uh, worked out what we're telling everybody about all the other pieces and how they link together. Have that answers your question. Uh, Matt, you asked the question about local development. Hopefully, I've already answered that, but if not, ping me another question. Um, uh, Anonymous asked the question, what's the best way to get started? Portal, VS Code, or Visual Studio? Um, I think, to be honest, today, probably the easiest way to get started is is the portal because you need you need nothing other than the browser uh, you can try out the basic concepts of a logic app and understand what they are if you haven't tried that you know get get going and and and, and see what it can do for you uh, and hand the basic constructs of how the logic apps comes together i think what we expect to see is as you become more uh comfortable with that and start to design it into your applications then moving to a model where you're using an IDE that you're comfortable with is definitely the way to go um, because then you can set up things like source control, um, like your DevOps pipeline. So, but uh, for getting started, hopefully uh, just get into the portal, spin up a logic app and try it out. You, you know, it takes it takes five minutes and you will learn a lot about how the basic constructs of the logic app works. Next your question. Uh, Johan, 
you've asked a question saying, uh, how do you plan for the new functions based logic app experience to work together with an ICE? Um, we were uh, similar to a lot of answers I've already given. So we're, we're working out the exact story for that. Um, it may mean some changes to the options you have for deploying an ICE or the way in which you, you do that. Um, so we will we will knit the story together and make sure you have the full story with that. I think for now, you know, ICE continues to work as it is. Um, and uh, if you've got customers using an ICE or you're using an ICE yourself, you know, don't be concerned that uh, we're not going to give you a path. We're absolutely going to do that. Um, I think the it's it's actually a good story, which we will mean we have more configurability options for you with that VNet connected environment uh, that you have with an ICE um, when you're doing it. So bear with us while we we work out the full story, but that's absolutely something that we should, uh, you know, we'll, we will keep you in a good state with. Uh, another question here. Let's just see if I've got this right. Is there a way to integrate with on-prem services, i.e. AD similar to Azure AD, or would that require some custom middleware um, as your function connected to Avena? Uh, that's interesting. AD is a special one, so I think let's let's answer this in two parts. Uh, generally, if if what you want to integrate with is AD, the general pattern we advise customers is to have your on-prem AD syncing with Azure AD. Uh, and again, don't, don't make me dip too far into that as I'm not a super expert, but generally having uh, your AD replicated into Azure AD in the cloud and then using OAuth to integrate with that um, to provide you know, authorization tokens. Um, it, so that's the specific case with AD, and I think, yes, you could probably write something custom that allows you to integrate with an on-prem AD, but, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's going to be a lot of code you're going to be writing yourself to do that. Um, if, if we're talking about wider on-prem services, um, so if you wanted to connect to a VNet and connect to on-prem services, so you wouldn't necessarily have to use an Azure function to that. The Azure function doesn't really add anything different from that point of view, other than the ability to write custom code. At the, at the moment, you can connect to those on-prem services using what we call the on-premise data gateway, which is actually service bus relay, um, uh, uh, doing an HTTP outbound call um, to check if it has any messages to process on-prem. Um, so, uh, you can absolutely use that, and that's a very common pattern, and it's used with things like um, Power BI uh, and other other services across Azure and the Power Platform. Um, what more and more customers are doing is using virtual network support, and that's in the integration service environment tier of Logic Apps, the dedicated tier. So you can uh, join, inject that into a virtual network, so that you can talk to services on prem. The 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 future. Um, offering we will have is a way to deploy Logic Apps as a separate runtime anywhere you choose, and that include include on-prem. There's a whole bunch of details with that that need to come uh, with things like how we're going to price that and connect that for you. But that is a pattern that is definitely in the works and will be available um, hopefully later this year. Uh, having to scroll quite a way through the quite a way through the discussion. Uh, I've got a question here. Yeah, are logic apps and durable functions not both the same? Uh, the answer is no, they're not. No, they're not. Um, they're whilst they can achieve similar aims, they are slightly different in their implementation and slightly different in what you might use to achieve them. <laughs> Um, and I think it's it it comes to whether you're you know you're taking code and just using kind of an orchestrator pattern on that code and durable functions is good for that. Um, if you're building a workflow, 
uh, and you want the Visual Designer Logic Apps for that. Um, but no, they they are not the same. It really depends on uh, what you're most comfortable with to build out. I mean, obviously, I would choose Logic Apps, but um, if you purely want to stay in code and just want to the kind some of the kind of fan in fan out patterns you get with durable functions, then that's absolutely an acceptable uh, pattern to use. Um, what you don't get with durable functions is things like the connectors, for example. So uh, it's for you to choose which you work would rather work with, but no, they they are different. There's definitely a flaw in the plan here, and every time I flip to the new question panel, I have to scroll all the way to the the, the new ones. <laughs> so apologies for that. Uh, is there any forum? Uh, is there any community form available for integration related topics? Yes, uh, I think so. So obviously you get, you know, question and answer services like Stack Overflow and the new um, uh, the new Microsoft service. I think it's called Answers, but I may be wrong because again, my brain is a little bit hazy this time in the morning. So that that gives you question uh, and answers. Um, the uh, if if you want to, uh, kind of wider topics about integration architecture and things like that, we do have the Azure um, Azure Community Connect service, which is uh, based on Yammer. Um, how you actually get into that, I'm not sure. I'm not able to look it up right now. But if that that would allow you to ask questions that are slightly wider and more architecture based, um, Wider than that for integration topics, I don't know, actually. That's a very good question. I don't know if there's a Reddit on it or something like that, but uh, certainly you could look at the Yammer uh, group that would allow you to ask those kind of questions, John. Um, Carlo G, for the Logic Apps connectors, what is the best way to get in contact with the team who manages these connectors? Uh, this is an order of feedback on issues and find out more about the roadmap and GA dates. Um, so you're right, there is a team that manages connectors. Um, uh, and uh, because we do share some of those connectors across things like Power Automate and Power BI, um, so there is a central team who do that. I think if if you are if you have a particular issue of blocker, there's a few ways in which you can you can highlight it to us. Uh, you can um, interact with things like user voice. Uh, you can uh, raise a support request. I mean, if this is a, um, something that is a blocker on you right now, uh, then you know raise, raising a support support request to get in touch. The um, I think the other ways you can do that is, you know, dropping dropping a line to us either via Twitter or um, uh, email, so you're able to uh, to to get in touch. I mean, we'll do our best to answer those. I think, uh, yeah, if if it's an absolute must have, you must get a response. Then support is the best way to do that. But if it's just about having a conversation or getting in touch, then social media is probably a good a good one. Uh, I'd be interested to know what connectors you're talking about there in particular, but that that's that's the way to do that. Um, we're in contact with the team all the time. So if I think if uh, there's there's feedback that, you know, we need to find a way to make uh, that conversation happen more naturally, then let us know and we'll have a think about how we could do that. Josh, uh, you mentioned connector limits are painful to me and have bl and have uh, have been using blob storage and Azure AD both require function app solutions. Um, definitely very interesting and timely. This was right at the beginning, so you may have missed it. Um, if you, uh, I'll make a note of those connector limits you talk about. Um, the we are we have a piece of work going on now to look at which which connector limits people are really having pain from. 
So I definitely want feedback on those. We have data, but I think anecdotal information also would be very useful for making sure that we up those limits where you need them. So uh, say, uh, drop us a line, but I'll make a note of those ones. Thank you for letting me do that, telling me that. Uh, Criminals asked an interesting question, which is, um, can Logic App scale to support a million users in actual production use cases where we would put more business logic there? Um, I think that's uh, unfortunately a bit of a loaded question because it depends. Um, what are those million users doing? But there's there's nothing to block Logic Apps. Logic Apps characteristics right now are perhaps not the fastest throughput. Sorry, uh, not the the lowest latency, but throughput is actually very good. So I think it would depend on what the users uh, are looking for, what they're expecting from the application and how that application is designed. So I think, unfortunately, my weasel answer is uh, uh, absolutely it can, but it depends on what you're trying to do with it. I think if you are looking at a system where you are looking at a far uh, higher level of control with a million users, um, and it depends on how often those users are using the system, right? So, uh, you know, are you looking at uh, um, uh, a transactions per second in the, you know, hundreds or thousands, or are you looking at something that actually a million users use it once a year? It, it, it depends entirely, but um, absolutely it can. Um, what you may need to do if your scale requirements are very high is look at something like the integration service environment that gives you much more control, control over scale out so you can actually um you know have have a much greater level of control over what your application uh scale profile is looking like but yes yes it can i think there's a, a whole bigger discussion there on what your application is and, and where you want to use that but uh yes is my short answer Uh, Kevin, you've got a question on what are your thoughts about monolith logic apps versus small decoupled logic apps, logic apps calling other logic apps? Um, I think the answer is that that's a good thing. Um, quite often get on customer call and see the customer has a very, very complicated logic app and understand why this happens. But the advice is normally to try and uh, reduce the logic app down to more manageable parts. That makes it easy, easier for maintenance. It makes it easier for you to be able to actually edit and manage it, like, like having a, an extremely large code, uh, code base. So uh, the thoughts are that that's a good thing. So yes, one logic app calling another is absolutely something uh, I would suggest in how you're setting it, setting it up. You should try and think of these things in, in smaller pieces. And even if that's the logic for, for example, identifying what's in a message so you can route to you know four logic apps depending on what that behavior is yeah don't do that in one logic app split it up makes it much easier to develop and then much easier to control so yes i would recommend that Uh, similarly, we've got an anonymous question saying, how do logic apps work in a microservice architecture? Um, I, I suspect this is probably a three hour lecture answer, but let's give a try and give a, a quick answer. Um, you can think of the logic app that, you know, a logic app can be um, a request response, HTTP request response, and it just becomes an API. So I don't think there's anything special necessarily uh, in in terms of the, and, and again, it depends whether you mean microservice service architecture in terms of the generic term or whether you're, you're referring to kind of 
uh, kind of uh, Kubernetes kind of uh, architecture. But if we assume it's the generic one, uh, Logic Apps is just another tool that you can use to build a microservice architecture. And you can you can represent a Logic App out as uh, an API, just like you would if you were writing code for it, uh, whether you're running in functions or app service or anything like that. So it can absolutely be part of that. Quite <clears throat> Quite common is when people use Logic Apps to do the top level orchestration of a lot of calls to different services. So for example, if you were calling a SaaS service and then processing some code and then posting to an ERP system, then Logic Apps is obviously a very good choice for doing that top level orchestration. Um, but uh, fundamentally, it's it's another tool with characteristics that you can use within that architecture. I hope that answers your question. I think we are a few minutes away from finishing, so I'll just try and answer one more. And apologies for those of you I haven't got to. I've uh, dismally failed at getting through questions at the same rate we did yesterday. Um, let's see. I'm having to scroll a whole long way. Uh, uh, okay, I'll answer that one in a minute. So, uh, Antti, can we have a link to the demo in chat? Uh, yes, I can do that. aka.ms forward slash BOD127. It should take you to our on demand session to have a look at the demo, but that won't be my last question to answer. Let's keep scrolling. Uh, Cronel, you've asked the question, so I'll answer this one. Um, will there be an Edge version or module for Azure IoT Edge? So in that demo uh, that I just posted the link to, um, what you will see is the last step I do in the demo is generate a, a Docker container with Logic Apps running in it um, and show you that working on my local machine. So the the ability to do that means you can then take logic apps and run it anywhere you choose as i said there are a whole bunch of things we need to work out before that becomes a uh, kind of a generally available feature but in terms of the direction we're going with making sure that you can run logic apps wherever you need to run it um the the ability to run in a container provides that so uh watch this space while we refine that particular offering and give you guidance on exactly how it's used but hopefully that gives you the steer of where we're going so you can start thinking about where you would apply this. And actually, if you've got IoT Edge use cases in, in, in uh, out there that you want to uh, apply, then that would be really, really interesting. And I'd love to hear more about those and where you'd like to use Logic Apps in that kind of scenario. Right, it is 6.45 here. Um, my sincere apologies for having the technical gremlins and not get, being able to get my colleagues on here. They're either um, uh, on the chat still uh, fuming at me because I made them get up incredibly early or they might have gone back to bed. Um, but just to finish up, um, thank you for joining us. I really apologize for those of you whose questions I wasn't able to get to. Hopefully they looked like there were quite a lot of duplicates questions in the chat, so hopefully I got to answer your question. Um, you can always drop uh, us a line on Twitter. So uh, Logic App CEO is our Twitter handle. Um, mine is Matthew Farmer if you want to get in touch. So uh, feel free to drop a question to me um, on uh, on Twitter and get in touch. I hope you enjoy the rest of the, the event. I think you have to fill in evals. So please, uh, please do that and let us know what you thought and if this was useful and uh, enjoy the rest of build. Thanks very much.